Midnight Muses here. Welcome back to my channel. So today is the day when I do my um, is it part four or part five at this point of my going back to work series. Um, this is going to be a little bit of a longer one because I do have um, a very, very big update. I know that at the end of last week, it was just like a quick five minute thing. So like I just got a phone call. Didn't really tell me much. I have up to three weeks to wait. I'll let you know what's going on. Um, so a lot has gone on in the course of a few days, not, not three weeks. So it's going to take a minute. Um, I actually already shot this and have since deleted it because when I looked back at the playback, I realized that I was telling everything in the wrong order and it was just a whole jumble of information. It was kind of confusing. I also shot the video right after um, I went and talked to a particular company, which I'll get into in a minute, but it was just like everything just was coming out like crazy. I was talking really, really fast because my anxiety was so high from actually doing this thing that I've been planning on doing for a very long time now that it was just, I was talking too fast. It wasn't making sense. So restart, refresh. Um, so hopefully, um, number two, this one will be good and I'll be able to post this later this evening. I'm quite happy that I actually did end up shooting that one yesterday because that way I, I was shooting a day early. So by shooting today, I'm still sh in my right time schedule. So everything's good in that way. Anyways, so I'm going to do this by the actual timeline as to how events played out. So as to make sense for everybody, I also have my trusty coffee with me. Um, hopefully that won't make me talk faster. I talk fast anyway. Um, by the way, for anyone who does think that I talk fast, because I do get it a lot in person, so I can only imagine that um, there are viewers out here that watch me that think I do, um, please say in the comments, let me know, and I will do my best to try and slow down. Um, also, I got a little bit of better lighting today because... Uh, I do have a new camera. Um, I did shoot it, shoot my boxy locks unboxing with this. Um, and I did find that it was kind of giving me a bit of an orange cast, but I have kind of managed to play around with it a little bit. So I'm liking this is actually what I look like, not, you know, super tan. So good. I mean, I want to look super tan, don't get me wrong, but I also want to look like how I actually look in real life. So <laughs> I'm good with this. Um, so let's start with Sunday. Uh, so Sunday, Sean wanted to me to dye his hair. He's really into having smoky blue hair at the moment. Uh, so I was like, okay, sure, whatever. We'll go and get some. So, uh, we were in the place where I get some of my salon products from and just having a conversation. I noticed that they had uh, a decent amount of new staff in there as well as a new manager. And we were just talking and joking because Sean was killing me with trying to pick this color because I told him essentially the one that would work the best and that he could do it in two ways. He could either get two dyes to mix together to do this or he could just get this one and it'll do what those two dyes would do together. It took him about 45 minutes to get there on his own. Anyways, <laughs> that's just how he is. But either way, it gave me time to just walk around the store. I wasn't purchasing um, anything for myself. I think I was just getting some bleach because I was basically out and had to pick that up, but like I didn't want to buy anything else. So I was just kind of roaming around talking to employees, which is what I like to do. Um, and so I was talking to the manager and we we're having a great time talking. Um, you know, she asked me a little bit about myself and, you know, like my background and whatnot. And I told her and I asked if they were hiring and she's like, oh, absolutely. Like, please come in with your resume. And um, I was like, I was, and I was very honest. I was like, you know what? I am just starting to come off a disability. So I have been off for a while, like, is that okay? And she was like, no, absolutely. Like, just come in with your resume. Like, we'd love, we'd love to talk to you. Like that, like you have all the skills of what we're looking for. And she said something that really kind of like struck something with me that I thought was really good in that, like, she, you know, cause she's saying like where I work, where I, where I technically work, but I haven't been there in like two years. So like whatever. Um, but she's like, I didn't even know they hired people with your kind of background. I'm like, well, generally wherever I go, I get told that I'm overqualified. So, you know, they took me, I worked there. Um, and she's like, well, wouldn't it be nice to put your skills to use? And it was like, oh my gosh, it'd be really, really nice to do that. Um, so I could not do anything with that information because I had not heard back from my caseworker about doing the vocational program, any of that yet. So it was like, 
please call me, please call me because I really, really want this. That's the company that I've been wanting to go to for quite a long time now. And like that, that's what I want. That's what I, that's what I'm trying to, to do all of this for and get off disability is to, to work with them. Um, so then Tuesday comes along and I was out with mom. We were doing some errands. Uh, I couldn't remember where we were yesterday, but I do today. Uh, we were at Henry's. My mom had to pick up some photos for my sister that were, had been printed and I just checked my phone and I realized that I had a missed call. So mom was like, oh, well, do you, do you want to come with me in the store? And I was like, no, there's a voicemail. Let me just check that. Like, I'll stay in the car. No big deal. And, um, check the voicemail. Could not understand a word of what was said in this voicemail. It was one of those, like, where the volume was too low and it was like, and I was like okay, I don't know who that is. I didn't recognize the number. It wasn't a 1-800, but it also wasn't privated, which I was told that it would be a private number calling me for my casework, but... I don't know, like, you know how, like, something just goes off in your head, and you're like, I, I need to call that back. Like, even though I didn't understand it, and it could be a telemarketer, because I do get weird telemarketer calls like that, let me just call it back. So I did, and it was my caseworker. Don't ask me what her name is. I, she's so lovely. Like, she's so, so lovely. I will never remember anyone's name to save my life. That's just how I am. Um... And so, and it's funny too, because I was told that keep your phone open as, as if anyone who's been watching this series will remember, keep your phone lines open because when they call, you want to be able to answer that call right away. Cause you'll never get back to them. Well, she answered on the second ring and I was, Hey, this is Sarah Francis calling. Just got a call from this number. Just wondering who was calling me. She's like, Oh, Hey, hi, what's going on? Da, da, da. So, you know, I had this conversation with her. I told her about Sunday, you know, running into the manager at the company that I want to work for and, you know, what do I do? Um, because I know that I'm supposed to be joining this vocational program and I know that I'm supposed to be getting, like, notes from my doctor saying that it's okay for me to go back to work and, like, all this kind of stuff. And she was like, well, really and truly, this is how it works. She goes, that's a brand new company. She goes, you've never worked there before? No other employees of yours work there? No. Okay, well, then you can absolutely make a resume, go there, and apply because the rules are very strange. Like, if I were to go to my old job... I could not do that. If I wanted to go back to my old job, I would have to go through the doctor's notes and like the whole process, which she told me would take months. Um, also, if I wanted to have retraining and any of that would also take months because I'm in the unique situation where I am very qualified. I have uh, three certificates and a degree under my belt already within the beauty industry. Um, I was, like, I'd love to go for my hair license. Um, I did all the schooling, but I didn't do the apprenticeship or the test. Um, that is something that realistically, if, if I work and save a little bit, I mean, it'd be after Sean and I have our wedding, but it's something that I could realistically do on my own. So I wasn't too concerned about that. Um, and with what I have, I can do freelance on the side and all of that on the side. No problem. I, I have all my licensing for that. Um, so I'm in a kind of a unique situation where I don't really need retraining. I just needed kind of that confidence boost and more help with the resume. Um, I used to be really good at resume writing. It's just, it'd been so many years since I've done when I, the last time I actually like full out wrote a resume was when in 2012, which is seven years ago, um, after I'd graduated from Sheridan and that was the last one that I wrote a resume. Um, because even though I had two jobs between like in that time, when it came to going to the second one, I literally just added the bottom what the other one was. Like, I didn't have to change it at all because it was in the same industry. Um, so this was, I was kind of nervous to have to do a completely new resume. And because I don't, don't even know where those ones are and they're old anyway. You kind of want to update that. And uh, so I was kind of nervous about that. But she said, no, go for it. Um, I Once I make a certain amount of money, um, well, she said to call her if I get it and if I don't get it. And that if I do get it, once I make a certain amount of money, I have to let them know. And then like, there's a process that goes on from there. But point is, I got the green light, make your resume, bring it in, go talk to the manager, see what happens. So obviously I'm not waiting on this. So Tuesday night, <laughs> I get home, I touch up my roots so that they're all, you know, nice and fresh. And then um, I had also gotten some green Arctic Fox hair dye because I've been trying to dye my hair green for like three months. Uh, so Wednesday morning, did the green, which is perfect. It is exactly how I want it to be. It does look slightly teal on camera, but I'm telling you, it's like the perfect shade of green. And it's like kind of like acid 
yellowy green at the root and then it goes into like a, a deeper acid green it's, i love it so much my hair is still like weirdly curly and messy anyways um so wednesday morning i got up early did that with my hair um got my mom was so so nice and and she put word back on our computer um and they had resume templates on there which was fantastic so so much easier and then i was able to build myself a new resume write it out printed it out went to said company the manager happened to be there um i i loved her expression when she saw me she smiled really big she definitely had that whole like recognition of, oh my gosh you came in i was like hey it looks like you remember me. I hope you remember me. You said to come in with my resume. I'm here with my resume. And just like that, she booked me in for an interview. Um, so I have to go back on Monday. I'm terrified. I am excited. I am feeling a lot of different <laughs> emotions about it. Uh, mostly good things. I think, um, and I had group therapy today, uh, where I really got to talk about how I feel about it, but I'm going to kind of give you the highlights of it here, which is I'm feeling all kinds of ways about this. One, this is what I've wanted for a very, very long time. So it's that fear of will I get it or will I won't and what happens if I don't? Because um, I'm very much a black and white thinker. I'm an all or nothing thinker. It's the like, this is what I've been working for. I like, please let me get this. I've worked so hard to fail now. Um, and two, because I am in such a horrible financial situation that it's like, I need this. Like, I not only have I worked specifically towards this company but like I need any job and if I could get my like at this moment my dream job right now like that would be like whoo so many like big moments for me but at the same time too and this is something that I've realized that I've never heard anybody talk about and I would really love to talk to somebody who's been through this because it's so weird and that is the when you've been on disability um, especially with me, you know, I got told that, you know, you have an incurable disease um, and then you want to go back to life. You want to go and have a life. Um, you know, like my, my goal is to have this job so that Sean and I can have our place, we're going to have our wedding, we can start our family. Um, how do you go back to that? I've been off for years. I've been living at my parents' house because they have been wonderful enough to let me stay here rent-free because if they didn't, I'd be on the street. But how do you go back to being a normal member of society like how do you do that and how do you do that successfully because I've been off for so many years I've gotten into a good routine yes you know I'm eating much better I exercise all the time um, I'm doing my art consistently I'm cleaning consistently like I'm, I'm being good like I've, I've, I'm so stable right now it's kind of weird but I'm doing it all in the house <laughs> essentially like I mean I go out for walks but everything else I literally do in the house so now, if this comes to fruition, I'll be leaving my house almost every day to go and work and, and be around people. And my agoraphobia is not affecting me like it was before. Like, it's still there. Don't get me wrong. I can still, you know, the heart palpitations happen. But I've learned how to, like, handle it and keep myself calm and steady. Um, I've come back to actually enjoying talking to people again. Not all the time, but most of the time. Um, and I just, I have this excitement and, and and this determination to have not just my life back but to have a better life because when it comes down to it the life that I had before wasn't great I loved my co-workers most of the time I enjoyed the job that I had um and I have had good friends I had a good social life um I mean I was single but that doesn't matter I never minded being single for the most part but I, I never made enough that I could live on my own for very long. I always had to come back home. I just, I wasn't, I never could, I never could take that next step up. So this time going back, it's not just going back to, to having a life after being on disability. It's changing everything. It's starting a brand new life. My goal right now is to not just get a job. It's to get a job that I can feel secure in, that I can work hard in, that I can build up within. And so that when I move out of here, I never come back. And actually one of the things that I've been doing with my cleaning is I've been purging like crazy. And it's because when I move out, as I said, I don't, I don't want to come back. So when I move out, I'm taking everything with me. So anything that I don't feel emotionally attached to, it's gone. It's being donated. If I can't donate it, it is being thrown out. But that's only if it's being like, if it's like really like past the point of being able to be kept. 
Um, I do have some hoarding tendencies. My mother is a straight up hoarder, so like, I'll admit to that. But point is, anything that doesn't, you know, spark joy, gone. Um, and I keep doing it over and over and over again. I'm finding a new space and a new area. I'm like, okay, we got to do this again and again and again. And it's because this time, it needs to be for real. It needs to be the last time that I leave. I'm never coming back. And it's not that I don't want to like my parents, but I mean, I'm 31 years old. I don't want to be living here anymore. I'm in love with somebody who I'm supposed to be married that I'm planning on marrying and that, you know, we want to have a family together and whether we end up having a family or not having a family, if it ends up being just the two of us, it doesn't matter. It, it, the point is, is that it's, <laughs> we want to have our life together, not, you know, he lives out in Toronto, I live out here, we see each other on weekends. It sucks. That's not the life that we want. So we are both actively working towards getting what we want. And I'm scared that I'm going to fail, but I can't. I have to do this. I have to be strong. I have to go. And I have a lot of people telling me how they're so proud of me and I'm their inspiration to do better. And I love them. I love all of them. Um, for everyone that's, that said that to me, like, I love you. That makes me very emotional. But at the same time, it's like, it's really heightening my, uh, fear of failure because it's like, I feel like if I fail myself then I'm not just feeling myself I'm also failing all of them as well. But I'm, I'm really, really pushing for this. I'm really excited for this. Um, I'm really looking forward to Monday. I will probably switch up my uh, videos next week uh, and do my work series at the beginning of the week and my makeup at the end of the week just because I'm going to want to update you guys on how it goes either way, probably sooner rather than later. Um, though also next week is Fiesta. It starts on Sunday, so my time is going to be stretched extremely thin. Um, so whatever videos you get... Um, there is a chance that I miss one and also if I whatever video I do shoot It's probably gonna be short because I'm probably not gonna have a lot of time. I'm gonna be honest with you about that um, but anyways This is where I am right now. I am actually feeling really optimistic and excited I'm just also really scared and I'm, the whole point of me doing this series is to be honest about what it's like, you know and and being off for a long time, yeah, I'm ready to go back, but I'm also terrified. <laughs> you know, it's a, it's a bit of a catch-22, you know, you're giving up your freedom, but you're giving up your freedom to also gain your freedom. So it's, it's, it's a weird, a weird situation to be in. And as I said, if anyone else has been there, please message me, comment, email, whatever. I would love to hear how you did it because I haven't found anyone to talk to about it and I would love to who like understands where I'm coming from at this point in my life. Um, anyways, thank you all so much for watching as usual. Uh, if you like this video, hit like. Um, if you want to continue following me on my journey of getting back to life after being on disability and told that, you know, you have an incurable disease and you're always going to be messed up. Well, here I am getting back to life, not so messed up and doing it like just living, you know? Um, but yeah, if you want to follow that journey with me, hit subscribe and I will see you next week. All right.